Welcome back. Our next guest is a Bronx creative, recently turned author and illustrator of Bronx Tones and Bronx Shapes, a bilingual children's book introducing youngsters to the shapes of the Bronx through photography. Joining us now to share more is Alex Rivera, also known as the Bronxer. Thank you for joining hey. us, Alex. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so for those who may not know you, you're all over the Bronx all the time, but some people may be tuning in that are not familiar. Can you tell us about yourself and your brand, The Bronxer? So my name is Alex Rivera and I reside in the Bronx and I was like born and raised here. So on top of that, I decided to kind of harness what art really is for me, which is being creative all the time and drawing and photography and pretty much focus it on a company and a project that I call the Bronx Air LLC today. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So how has COVID-19 impacted you as a creative? Have you faced any challenges or changes to your work? How have you been getting through? um pretty much at the beginning like towards like march ish that point was like oh man nobody has money to spend because everybody's spending it on essentials quote unquote and in reality i'm more of a luxury kind of category like people don't need photography people don't need design people need money and food <laughs> so like pretty much if my audience or my clients have no money, then I don't have any money. So I was like pretty much suffering, especially as a freelancer. Yeah. But you still turn to the creative side and you know- Oh, that's a fact. <laughs> yeah. Social media, post, posting all your, um, the posts and being engaging with your followers. So that leads me to our next point. Um, first of all, congratulations on becoming a published author and illustrator from the Bronx, Dominican at that. Um, <laughs> more about your first book series, Bronx Tones and Bronx Shapes. Yo, it was really dope. Um, it, it started off with a play on a design that I wanted to do for myself personally called Bronx Tones in general. And what I would do is I would photograph like an image somewhere outside or inside, very candid, and I would choose a color from that image and then I will create my own color code or find a color code and put it on it and name it something relative to the Bronx or that area in general. And after a while, it kind of caught up um a couple people saw it especially one of my favorite people saw it which is like uh, coquilla books publishing and also penguin random house like those people were like yo we love your sh you know we love your stuff <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's uh let's do something about it but let's like uh aim it towards kids and i'm like all right i'm down for that so we kind of mended what bronx tone was and what children's learning should actually be and i kind of like pushed to that and now like we're here that. so the book is like a photography book like it you're using your photography yeah. from the bronx and you're illustrating how shapes can come out of this photography as well is that right yes um it's it's mainly photography a little bit of design i mean the design is not what really drives it it's more of like hey you're from this area also you're from this location so you can relate as a child in the bronx or anywhere else around the world that's related to the hood pretty much that's awesome so i wanted to ask you what representation in publishing and media means to you as a bronx-born dominican creative uh what does it mean to me i feel like everything <laughs> um you're breathing just like your environment is like i think everybody's a product of their environment so every time i see you know i guess a halal truck or a bodega opening and closing i feel it just like everybody else I mean, I want everybody else to feel it, just like I am. So that's why I create art, so people can see through my eyes. And if you can elaborate on the importance of using your art and creativity to spread relevant messages and connect to other Bronx sites through social media, sometimes you use humor on social media. Um, yeah. Also, like the definition series that you've been yeah. doing. Yeah. Um, so just give us a little background on that. Um, honestly, I want to inspire a lot of upcoming artists and artists in general because if it wasn't for inspiration from somebody that looks like you then i feel like the motivation isn't truly there but um every time that i push out you know a cool photo and like give it an actual proper caption or inform like informative phrase behind it people enjoy it like if i say something that's relative to you guys like brick nobody knows what brick means unless you're from new york it's so brick, brick outside right now yeah, it's gold i had a friend that's from like california and they're like what are you talking about brick a brick wall a brownstone like it was weird to them but it was hilarious to me because they physically thought of something but we look at things like yo you touch a brick in the cold it's colder than the cold 
<laughs> but, no, so, <laughs> pre-COVID, you actually had plans to collaborate with El Fogón Center for the Arts to help provide local artists a space to showcase their talents in person. Of course, things have changed because of the pandemic, but how has um, that plan shifted and what's to come um, from there in the future? Um, yeah, like, I mean, El Fogón is really dope. I mean, you could go in, you could enjoy, you could be an artist, you could meet new artists, you could flourish on your own in there, and you have pretty much no limits at all. But since this whole COVID situation, you know, now nobody could go there and express their events. I had um, pretty much two art gallery show premieres happening there around that time, and we had to cancel them because of that. Um, it messed, I, I was sad, but I'm pretty sure the artists that was about to have their first show ever is even sadder than I am, you know? So like, I wanted that person to flourish, you know, you, you create and you plan, but now you have to kind of like double back and kind of do it again in a more careful state because everybody's really sensitive in times like this. And also a strategic one, because you also want to either A, make money or B, be on a positive note with everybody else. Right. That's true. Thanks for sharing. Um, so yeah. now back to your book. Um, were you, um, yeah. uh, I guess, influenced or I guess inspired by your own nephew? Because I know he's on the front cover <laughs> of the books. So. Oh, he doesn't even know what's coming for his future. Like it's, it's like he has a cool uncle. <laughs> nah, that was, but um, he's he's like experiencing what I should have experienced at his age, but I didn't. So I experienced it later on but at least you have a positive note you have like actual peers that are showing you what a kid's life should kind of feel like you know without the distractions of you know a or b parent going out and you know only working and not really focusing on your dreams right mm -hmm. so times like this you know kids have fun because there's like less physical school and like more home time but i mean I, he's happy as hell like, he's like in front of a cover and <laughs> he yeah, doesn't know. Yeah. I think it's dope. Um, but what do you hope for the book, for the future of the book? Do you hope to have it in schools and libraries, things of that nature? Yeah. Oh yeah, all around the world, man. Like it's uh it, I think every kid should be accessible to books in general because those are things you could take with you. You don't have to charge it on a wall and wait for it to load. Like <laughs> you open it and you go. Like, you know what I mean? It's like something that you get to learn, you get to cherish and grow off from. Yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah. And what, um, how did you wind up doing it? Like, um, did you get in contact with, I mean, you said that the illustrator, the publisher actually reached out to you and said they love your work, but yeah. um, how did you get started? You hear the ice cream truck in the back? Always. We're in the Bronx. Um, <laughs> but how, did, how did you decide to um, delve into the world of publishing and, you know? Um, yeah, Sarisia Fennell, which is the founder of uh, the Bronx is Reading, finessed it all, man, in the most amazing way possible. She's like, hey, here's a chance and run with it. And that's what I did. She um she got me around a lot of cool people and it was up to me to kind of like come up with my ideas and my work and show it in a presentable manner because obviously one needs to have like ambition and talent, you know, to do something in that genre. But she helped out a lot. Um, she kept on pushing me a lot. She's from the Bronx. She's out here helping Bronx people. Like, <laughs> so why not return the favor with being successful with something that you took your time to present to somebody else? Shout out to the Bronx's reading. Um, before Back. we go, um, how long yeah. did it take? Did you do all this through COVID nineteen, or was it happening before the pandemic? La yeah, all the way last year, July. So that's when I initially started like going and like meeting with each other, having meetings, emails back and forth. Like, it was like, it was fluid though, because like we all understood each other. So like, I didn't have a bad time doing it at all. It was more like how to like look at things, wait for things. And a lot of factories were closed. So basically due to COVID, a lot of things were slowed down. Like things got pushed back. I couldn't really do like a, a book celebration, mm. you know, like stuff like that. Like when we want people to do when something cool comes up. <laughs> Maybe something virtual yeah. we could take advantage of this uh, digital yeah. world that we're living in now. <laughs> yeah, we should. I mean, we're going to see. I was speaking with um, Noel from the Lip Bar. We're going to see if we could put something together um, that hopefully everyone would enjoy. We'll be on the lookout for that. Any next projects for the Bronx? Sir? I know you're always on the move. <laughs> um, I'm moving towards uh, actual wall murals and uh, diving into my 
artist side or fine art side of my creative world and I'll go around and just like paint walls all day <laughs> and like, have fun yeah so I'll see you around yeah. <laughs> so how Thank can you. people purchase your book and stay connected with you online um Barnes and Nobles has it the lip bar has it um Penguin Random House their website has it Penguin Kids um and whatever other shops would have it but a lot of uh publishing or published or not even publishers just people that sell books would kind of have um I think the boogie darn grind is about to have it soon yeah so yeah. they're pretty much everywhere yeah you heard that you can find the book anywhere in the Bronx online wherever it's called Bronx Tones and Bronx Shapes by author and illustrator Alex Rivera aka the Bronxer thank you again for joining us today you can follow the bronxer all over social media at the bronxer if you want to stay connected with him you can also visit his website thebronxer.com that's all for our show today thank you for tuning in to bxrx i'm your host sanji lopez wishing you and your family safety and wellness now and always <laughs>